All righty, welcome back to Zoot's Fight Talk Boxing Edition of Fight Show, where we bring you your sweet science straight up with no twists. And uh, my next guest is a fighter who has a big fight coming up on uh, July the 11th. It'll be on uh, ESPN Friday Night Fights. Yeah, he had a huge fight in April when he took on uh, the slogger Curtis Stevens and uh, was doing exceptionally well in what I already described as a fight that's on the short list of fighter of the year candidates. And uh, the fight was stomped in the 10th round in very controversial fashion. And we're here now with Toriano Johnson. He's going to speak about all of that stuff. And uh, welcome back to the show, Toriano. Oh, good evening to everybody, and God bless you. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Oh, the pleasure is all ours. Uh, and it was certainly a pleasure to see you uh, execute a game plan that you sounded like you were developing against this guy, Curtis Stevens, uh, you know, punches and bunches, smothering him. And it, it was working out very well for you. You were getting hit a lot in that fight, but you were doing a lot more hitting than he was, and you were certainly winning all the rounds. Talk about that fight a little bit, and talk about the game plan going in. Was that exactly what you wanted to do to Curtis Stevens? Indeed, that that fight was a very exciting one. Uh, I said it before the fight, you know, that it's a fight that I will enjoy. You know, I like going up against guys who like to throw their hands and who like to punch, especially with power. Uh, the game plan going up against Curtis, you know, it was one that I'm naturally good at doing. Uh, he was somewhat tailor-made for me to fight, especially a fight like that, you know. It, it was one that I was indeed ready to win, and, and by all means, I felt it though I did win the fight. Um, Curtis, you know, a strong guy. You know, uh, I haven't worked on my power for quite a while, but I, I'm one who also likes to sit down and crack, but I wanted to have fun, and fun is what I had with Curtis. So my game plan and all, you know, it just worked out fine. Yeah, and it certainly was a lot of fun for us to watch. Uh, a lot of people going in there were not expecting much uh, from you, I think that it had a lot more to do with Curtis Stevens' big reputation and you not really being that known on American uh, television up until that point. But you, you certainly got everybody's attention after that performance, Toriano. Oh well, yeah, that that's a pleasure of mine. But uh, and I've learned one thing, you know, uh, I've become very complacent and very relaxed. Uh, it had happened on many occasions in my career where you know I felt as though. And many had also felt as though that I have been getting the raw end of the stick. When I say that, I've been getting the unfair end of the stick. As in my amateur career, even at the Beijing Olympic, I felt as though I had won that fight uh, to to medal at the Olympic, which, and, you know, I'm fighting the hometown guy in his hometown. You know, uh, I got to relax in that fight and the Curtis Steven fight. I'm not fighting in my backyard. I'm fighting in somebody's backyard where they are the favorite. And all the benefit is on their side, and uh, I'm never going to be like that again. There's no longer, you will never ever see a Toriano in the ring who is relaxed. Uh, I'm always going to feel not welcome, and, and feeling that way drives me and gives me the energy to go in there, you know, and to take care of business like I have been doing before. All of those wins, 14 and 0, was, was great, but I believe that even the 14 and 0 made me just a little too relaxed to believe that, hey, I'm in here, I'm the best, I'm better than Curtis Stevenson. It's good to believe that, but then also it's also good to know that you need to be aware that there are dangerous fighters out there, and you really need to protect yourself. And that is where I'm, that's what I'm going to do. The Curtis Stevens fight was not the highlight of my life. I, it's just the beginning thus far. You will see a better Toriano Johnson come July 11 and the future. Now, you certainly, uh, you know, got everybody's attention, like I said. You certainly took a lot of punches from Curtis Stevens, although he he took a lot more from you, as was well documented. But uh, early in the fight, it looked like he was landing some power shots on you. And uh, throughout the fight, he certainly is showcased as a powerful puncher. Was he the hardest puncher you've ever faced? Describe his punching power to the fans. Oh, no, no doubt. Curtis Stevens is one with spectacular power. He's an amazing athlete, you know, uh, and, and I believe it also contributes to him being able to be a durable fighter as well. 
one who can take punches, you know, and I believe that that's one of his greatest assets to to give a good punch and to take a good punch. I don't find Curtis to be one of the most technical fighters like I am. I'm not as technical as he is. I mean, I'm not as, as technical as many are, but I feel if I was more technical that night when me and Curtis Stevens had fought. But uh, he's one who can take a punch, and he can give one even better. And I think that right there is Curtis Stevens' greatest asset to take a punch. Uh, so don't don't be fooled. Uh, Curtis can really hit. He, he really can hit. I cannot take uh, a man's credit away from him. All right. Uh, uh, and, and I'm glad you said that because he certainly did uh, hurt you in that 10th round. It, it did not warrant a stoppage by the majority of uh, opinions out there, but it, it certainly shook you up. Uh, was there any regret going back and knowing how far you were on the cards uh, to still try and go at it with him toe-to-toe in that 10th round? If you had to do it all again, would you take a different approach or would you do the same thing right again? Well, you know, I did have a game plan, and our game plan was to get Curtis Stevens out of the ring, not by just getting a result as in, you know, a point. We were trying to take Curtis Stevens out. Would I try not to do it again? One thing I would have tried to change is uh, I would have sat down a little bit more. I had decided, you know, during that fight, hey, listen, when I watch it again, I, I watch where, you know, I have gotten very complacent and very relaxed. And the, the eager and the, and the energy, I had lost it. it mentally. My body was totally fit, but I had lost it in my, in my heart and my mind to go there and to drive and to dig to get Curtis out of there. And I will not make that mistake again. Uh, yeah, so if I were to change anything, it would be definitely, it definitely be my, my eagerness to get him out of there. And I, I'm going to be more energized the next time if I would have had the opportunity to do it again. Now, I, uh, many people ask me, should I, should I have run? Uh, no. It is not in my nature to do so, and, and I can't change that. I, I've tried, you know, to think about it back and forth, but Toriano nature is not one who will run and dance and do all of that stuff. No, I'm a fighter. I'm a clear-cut a fighter. So if you want to, to figure me out, you figured me out just now. Toriano is a fighter with a big heart. I can take a good punch, and you've seen that I'm very durable, just as Curtis Stevens is. So I know what it is, you know, what it takes to go in there and get a man out of the ring. I have lost that in the Curtis Stevens fight. Now, uh, if you can, go back and describe what you were feeling when referee Gary Rosado did uh, call the fight very prematurely and uh, taking away what would have been a wonderful victory uh, for you. A- at the moment that it happened, could you believe that it was happening? What was going on through your mind? Well, at first I thought Mr. Rosado was actually uh, coming to break us, you know, to break us up and, uh, you know, just to separate us a bit for the fact that we were smothered a bit. But uh, when when he had called it a stoppage, well, it was clearly... <laughs> I felt there was an unfair deal. You know, Curtis had given me an onslaught of punches in the fourth round, if we can all recall. You know, the fourth round was uh, probably his best round, which and I felt what I tried to do again throughout the whole fight. Yes, in boxing you're going to get hit, and there are going to be occasions where you're going to get hurt. Uh, this is boxing. This is a full contact sport. You know, we're not going to try to turn this into golf or tennis, you know, where you never meet your opponent. Uh, hand to hand. This is full contact, so you're going to get hit. And I, you know, and that's what I was doing. You know, I, I took a few punches to give another. In that fourth round, Curtis Stevens had given a good onslaught of punches. But if you can recall and watch the fight again, in that fourth round, I came back. Just as I did throughout all of the rounds, even in the fifth round and the sixth round, Curtis would give me a shot, and he would lose his stamina after giving the shot, and I would come back and finish it. I wanted to regain that same kind of uh, energy into the 10th round, and whereas he had given me a good onslaught of punches, not to say that I stood there and I took it. No, he, he gave me two good left hooks in that 10th round, just as he did in the 4th round. And uh, it wasn't intention to take the shot. It was intention, you know, just to be there uh, to, to ride off of the punches and then come back and counterattack off of his, off his attack. Uh I was surprised, you know, that Mr. Rosado stopped the fight in the 10th round when, if it was the case, the fourth round would have been an ideal time for him to do it. 
Okay, well said, uh, Soriano. And uh, you know, you certainly did not lose in many people's eyes. And uh, you get a fight now on ESPN. A uh, relatively short amount of time. That fight was in uh, April, early April. You're fighting on uh, July the 11th. Uh, talk about the fight. Talk about your opponent a little bit, and what it's, what it means to you to get back into the ring uh, on a pretty pretty quick uh, schedule. You know, I, I want to stay busy. You know, I, I've learned my lesson. Being out of the ring for quite a time, you know, your name is not going to be mentioned. You're not going to be the favorite. Staying active, staying busy. You know, staying on television. You know. You get that, that energy from the crowd and, and from the fans, you know, they're able to see you on a regular. And, and I believe that played a role in my fight with Curtis. You know, a lot of people saw me going in there as the underdog. And, uh, and because of that also, you know, um, the decision was already made prematurely. You know, okay, this guy's the underdog. He's been out of ring for so long. He haven't fought high fighters. So saying that... Uh, Let's just call it, you know, give him a 30% chance of winning the fight and give Curtis a 70% chance. And, and that decision, to me, was already made before the fight was started. Uh, so getting right back into the ring right now is a good thing. My body is physically fit. My mind is beyond mentally. I am solid as iron at this point right now. Giovanski is a dangerous fighter, just as Curtis Stevens was. In fact, all fighters are. They, <laughs> Giovanski... Uh, G. Avanki, I'm sorry for pronouncing his name wrong. I, I know I am at this moment. I'm just a little anxious. Well, he's a dangerous fighter with 15 and 0 at this point. You know, he's an undefeated fighter. He had 10 knockouts. I believe this guy is a dangerous fighter out there. So at this point now, you know, I cannot take him lightly. You know, uh, a guy fighting in his backyard, backyard once again in Seattle, Washington, his hometown. You know. No doubt. Uh, I believe a lot of the odds are against me, but that only makes me better. And and that's what I love to do. I love to prove people wrong. So going against, going against Giovanni, there will be no rest in my mind or my body. I'm going in there to do, you're going to see a better Toriano. That's all I can say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. your opponent's name is Mike, and I, I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation too, but it looks like the spelling is Gavronsky. G A V R O N S K I Gavronsky, and like you said, he's an undefeated guy, high knockout percentage, like yourself, fighting in his home uh, town, and a, t- a tough situation for you when when you when you think about uh, all the home cooking and the, you know the thing uh, the things that uh, could be an obstacle for you. But you're a type of guy that loves to challenge yourself, and that's why you have a continuing and growing fan base. It's, uh, not a lot of guys would have taken this fight on such no- short notice against a guy with a high knockout percentage in his hometown, and you have to be commended for that. Oh, well, indeed. You know, uh, gone are the days when fighters fight fighters. You know, champions uh, today don't fight champions. In fact, I believe, honestly, there are too many titles out there. There must be an undisputed number one champion out there. How how many champions can you have? So, to me, I believe, you know, like Muhammad Ali did in his days, you know, he fought the best at that time. I want to do that. I want to fight the best. In order for me to be considered or recognized or known as the best, you have to beat the best. Uh, there are many good fighters out there. I give my up, my hands up, salute, you know, Danny Golovkin, you know, and, and Miguel Cotto. Those guys are champions. Otherwise, you know, there are other guys who run away from fighters, and I'm not ashamed to say it, and I'm, I'm, hey, listen, if they want to back it up, we can do it in the ring. Guys like Peter Quillen, you know, uh, hey, I believe those guys run away from good fighters. They need to step up, put their mouth down, and put the titles up. You know, uh, I want to fight the best. Clear cut, I want to fight the best. So I'm going to go in this ring. It's not short notice. This is boxing. This is lifestyle. This is what I do for a living. So when you say a short notice fight, I don't know what fighter can just jump up and say, oh, they gave me a fight on short notice. My job is to stay training and to stay busy. And so there well, was no I, short notice. Right, right, anywhere. right. Well, not so much short notice. Maybe I phrased it wrong. Just, you know, you're getting it back in the ring in about three months after a, a big fight. You know, we don't see that that much on the, on the top level anymore. And, you know, it's a short period of time when, when you're fighting again. And we appreciate it. We like it. But it's just odd to, to see today when guys are only fighting once or twice a year most of the time. 
Well, you know, I, I have a good promoter, Gary Shaw. He has been very generous with me, you know. He's been trying to get me on cards. Be that it is, you know, promoters are not easy. I mean, opponents are not easy to find. In fact, we have, would have been able to fight earlier, uh, the 25th of last month. Like I said, opponents was sort of difficult to do. But right now we have gotten the earliest time was possible for an opponent. Gavansky, he was uh, available, and I give kudos to him, you know, for accepting the fight and to allow two of the best fighters in the world right now to go against each other to prove which one is better to move on to take that step to becoming a world champion. And, uh, yeah, you know, three months, I feel as though that was just a little too long of a rest. And uh, I can assure you, win, lose, or draw, you will see Toriano in the ring, active, busy, doing what he does best, and not just entertaining, but doing what he loves to do, and that's fighting. Well, we certainly appreciate it. We appreciate that you are uh, the type of guy that not only likes to fight often, wants to go in there, wants to fight the best, wants to take a guy out when we, uh, you know, watch you fight. It's not enough just to win a, a boring fight on points for you. You sound like you want to go in there and you want to knock a guy out. And that's all. The, that, that's the very throwback style. You do realize a lot of the top fighters today do not have that mentality, Toriano. Oh no, no, and I, you know, and and I honestly do, you know, forgive me, but I do believe the the responsibility also goes to the network for allowing such bogus fight to be uh, taking place on television. You know, fans want to see good fight, and I believe the network, the TV networks, have been robbing the fans of good fights. You know, uh, hey, let's put the fights on with Toriano, you know, and and incredible fighters, you know on television, and even if not just me, but other fighters out there who are good and exciting. I'm not just a boxer, but I'm a boxing fan. I watch boxing daily. This is what I love, you know, and I'm a boxer at heart. So I believe, you know, I want to be entertained just as others want to be entertained in the ring and out the ring. You know, so let's give good fights. Very good, very good. And uh, your fight is uh, a short two weeks away. What's uh, the life of Toriano Johnson like in these next two weeks? What type of, uh, you know, training system do you have? How How is it in everyday life like as you wind down to these next two weeks? What do you do pre- pre- to prepare uh, from this point on? A lot of the stuff has already been done, but now we're down to the final stretch. How do you approach it? Well, right now, you know, I've gotten a lot of my... A lot of my rust out, uh, been in the ring, doing a lot of work, even uh, uh, from Mr. the great Glenn Johnson, who had recently fought. Uh, unfortunately, I think he had suffered a loss there, but uh, a very experienced fighter who had given me a whole lot of experience in the ring, a whole lot of knowledge, and uh, a lot of sparring coming from a lot of other fighters. And, uh, you know, now we're just coming down the home stretch. Uh, I'm relaxed, and uh, I can't give up. We do have a secret weapon into this fight, but I can assure you that Toriano has not changed from his last fight. But uh, I have improved on several other uh, skills that I do possess. And so uh, you're going to see Toriano come into this ring posing much more agility, more aggressiveness, more speed, more power, much more power than he did the last time. I'm going in there, and I'm going to be very entertaining, and it's going to be an exciting fight to watch. But it just may be, unfortunately, a short fight. All right, Toriano. We can't wait to see it. July the 11th, ESPN, Friday Night Fights. Toriano Johnson in uh, against the guy who has a tough uh, name to pronounce, Mike Galvaronsky, I think is the correct, correct spelling. High knockout percentage, undefeated guy. Toriano Johnson, you're going into... His hometown, it looks spectacular, and uh, we can't wait to see it, and we thank you for giving us uh, some time tonight on a uh, you know, busy uh, schedule for you, and uh, we thank you, and we hope to have you on the show once again, and we'll give you some final words before you go. Oh, yes, you know, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come out, you know, and to give the fans what they want, and uh, you will definitely see a new and improved Toriano. Uh, I would like to give the almighty God the honor and the glory for allowing this opportunity to come. And uh, my family, back into the Bahamas, you know, uh, we are 400,000 strong, and I feel like we're going to have 400,000 strong come July 11th in that ring, just right after the Bahamas uh, Independence Day, uh, July 10th. 
So uh, don't miss this fight. It's going to be an explosive one, a very entertaining and fun one. Hopefully, for Gavonsky's sake, it will not be a short fight. All right. Thank you, Toriano. Uh, again, uh, can't wait to see the fight, and uh, you enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, God bless you all. Have a good evening. All right. Thank you, Toriano Johnson. Stepping right.